Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Royal Rumble Match! Yes, it is that time of the year again. The WWE's biggest and best gimmick match will be happening very soon. So, while we wait for the wonderful match to start, let's take a look back at some of the best Royal Rumble moments, matches, and overall awesomeness that the WWE has supplied us with over the last 20 years. This is the best Royal Rumble moments of the WWE. Greetings, everybody. This is DJ Kalkos for the Haymakers, and I am alongside... Toon Critic Y2K. And Nikki V. So, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania season. This is that time of year where WWE decides, oh yeah, we're supposed to actually start getting good again. Because it's usually around this time of year, the road to WrestleMania, that they start improving a little bit on their storylines and they start building up to their big, you know, event, WrestleMania. This is the time of year where we always look forward to seeing, like, you know, the biggest thing since Christmas for wrestling fans. <laughs> I know this is a little off topic, but you just made the case for why the WWE should have an off season. Because every year, it seems like between WrestleMania and SummerSlam, they just go into autopilot and just kind of coast for a while. So, yeah. But now they're finally getting their asses in gear, Royal Rumble, and then... Fastly, and then WrestleMania. And <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about Fastly. We don't know what to make of that just yet. Yeah, yeah. we'll see how that goes. New pay per view. But, I'm just glad that they're nixing a pay per view that's based around a gimmick match because, in my opinion, there's yeah. only two pay per views that should be centered around a gimmick match. I should silence my phone. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> -ha, now I'm not the one that has the ringtone going. <laughs> I am sorry. Give me one second. <laughs> Power. No, no, no. Don't power off. I actually need my phone. Vibrate. There we go. Okay, we're good. Anyway. Two matches that should have a gimmick. In my opinion, there's two pay-per-views that, uh, that should be centered around a gimmick. That's Money in the Bank, because that has significance later on, guaranteed, and Royal Rumble, because it's the Royal Rumble. It's the most exciting match uh, that happens with WWE all year guaranteed. Even the 2014 Royal Rumble with the terrible finish was still a good Royal Rumble. It's always fun to just watch 30 people get into the ring and throw each other over the top rope because that's exciting, right? No, I'm, I, no I'm, 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 in all seriousness, the Royal Rumble is one of my favorite pay-per-views too because I love the fact that it's unpredictable. You really don't know how it's going to go. You don't know who's going to show up at what number. You don't know who's going to get eliminated or by whom. You just know that you're going to be there for at least 30 to 40 minutes just wondering, okay, who's it going to come down to? Most matches have, like, you're pretty sure how it, you know, how it's going to end, but you could leave some room to be surprised. The Royal Rumble match, like, there's anywhere from, like, four to ten people at any given time where you think, eh, a chance at winning this thing even this year's even uh, we're sure one guy is going to win it there's still a cavalcade of guys who who is on the list of could very easily win it so. yeah we're gonna save that for our predictions video uh later on this month so yeah these are some of our i guess favorite moments from the royal rumble so who are we starting off with here i think we're gonna start off with a miracle zach take it away Oh boy, okay, I know exactly what we're talking about here. Now, this is my personal all-time favorite uh, Rumble moment. That's, I think that's good that we're starting off with that. Okay, so let me take you back to Royal Rumble 2006 in beautiful Miami, Florida. We're at the Royal Rumble match, and okay, I'm just going to take you to right near the end. You have Rey Mysterio, Triple H, and Randy Orton. Rey Mysterio and Triple H are all beat up because they were at number one and number two. They've been going on in this match for quite a long time and yet surprisingly have not been eliminated. All the fans are wondering, OK, why is Mysterio in this? He doesn't belong in the ranks of like Triple H and Randy Orton. And speaking of Randy Orton, here he comes at number 30. Everybody at this point is like, OK, Randy Orton's got this. He's at 30. He's fresh. Throw him over. Throw him over. Over. No. Behold, because we're at almost an hour into this match. It's just, oh God, I can still remember my reaction. 
Triple H has Mysterio up. It looks like, oh God, Mysterio's done. Nope, head scissors. Triple H goes flying over the top rope. Everybody's freaking out. Wait, what? Triple H is out? You gotta be kidding me. But then Orton's like, okay, no, I'm gonna do this. But no, Mysterio gets him over. Head scissors. Holy shit, Mysterio wins the Royal Rumble. Holy shit, I cannot emphasize that enough. It's a true holy shit moment because Mysterio, who had been going on in this match for an hour and two minutes with change, somehow survived against all the other big guys. Well, except for Cena. If they threw Cena in here, then Cena would have probably won. But <laughs> besides that, Mysterio wins the 2006 Royal Rumble and gets a chance for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 22. It ended up being the longest amount of time that any one person has ever spent in one Royal Rumble at one hour, two minutes, 12 seconds, over a full minute more than second place's Chris Benoit of 04. It was just, you wouldn't expect a guy that little to have that much energy and be able to last for that long in the match. But you know what? That is why Rey Mysterio is a hero among short people like me. He is somebody who, like, damn it. I had a thing going there, and I just lost it. Regardless, Rey Mysterio finally got the push that he'd been looking for for forever, because, as you said, Nikki, he was a hero for the little guys. He's five foot six. I mean, even among little guys, he's a little guy. He's only 175 pounds. You have bigger guys that... that tower over him at a full foot taller, a hundred pounds heavier, and Rey Mysterio being so fast and so agile, he always manages to evade them all, but he never lasts in battle royale type situations because of his size. And this time, he was able to avoid getting thrown out. He was able to avoid risking everything on stupid high-flying stunts and instead choosing his moments quietly, softly, and making sure that he was never able to get out. It was unbelievably impressive because, as you said, Zach, it, nobody expected this. He's going up against Triple H and Randy Orton. Come on! Seriously? I mean... Triple H uh, won the Royal Rumble in 2002. Randy Orton was a, in the midst of a massive push that's been ongoing for, what, three years? So, give or take. Yeah, give or take three years. So there's no way he could have won. And then he does it. And then he goes on to WrestleMania 22 to win the World Heavyweight Champ away from Kurt Angle. It was awesome. Not to mention, he was the one who pinned Randy Orton to even win the championship and the match. So I think that was a nice little turnaround because they had a nice little feud, Mysterio and Orton, going up to WrestleMania to the point where Mysterio even lost his chance to face Kurt Angle. But we all know how that went. We all know how great the match was. It was a great turnaround, I think, for Mysterio and a great road to WrestleMania for him. Hey, hey, Mysterio, he's down there in hell. God. Uh, okay, maybe not the best feud, but it was a still an interesting feud. <laughs> interesting is a very good word to put it. And we have choice. <laughs> we have choice words for that feud in our backlog that you will be able to hear later on. But we digress. The Royal Rumble, that Royal Rumble, just for Mysterio's presence alone, is definitely worthy of this list. If that doesn't give him a Hall of Fame spot, I don't know what what will, but. If you're talking about Mysterio and why he needs to be in the Hall of Fame, this match is a perfect example of that, I think. That and the fact that he's made of fucking glass. At least yeah. nowadays he is. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> they, they need to redo his uh, theme song. Booyaka Booyaka 911! Booyaka Booyaka <laughs> oh Ambulance! Booyaka Booyaka 911! Booyaka Booyaka! My knees are broken again! <laughs> booyaka <laughs> Booyaka 911! <laughs> Too soon! Seriously? Too soon. Oh my god. <laughs> we pissed off all Rey Mysterio fans. Nice going. <laughs> I, I was about to talk about, oh, and this wasn't the only time he lasted a crap ton of time in the Rumble. In 09, he lasted almost 50 minutes. But, you know, we're kind of going in that direction. Let's see. Booyaka, right. booyaka, 911. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> Uh, Calcos, why why could it not be surprised that you'll try to make that into an actual theme song? Like you'll put time and effort into recording the lyrics for it or some shit. I don't know. Uh Calcos has gone full heel, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am uh I am a face. 
I'm trying to compare my personality to another face. I'm not I'm not very sure which. Uh but hey, leave your leave a comment below. Compare us to certain wrestlers. You're more than welcome to do that. This should be fun. I'd laugh if like Nikki gets Mysterio. <laughs> Anyway, uh, next up on our list after Rey Mysterio, we have another smaller guy who was in the midst of a big push, but we're going to have to go back about 11 years from 2006. Specifically, it will actually be the 25th, um, not 25th, but uh, 20th anniversary of this Rumble this year. We go back to 1995, and um, the winner of the 1995 Royal Rumble, I please Look this up because I know there's there's a celebrity that uh, the winner of the 1995 Royal Rumble gets a date with, and I forget who it was. Uh, so if you could Looking look that up, up please and thank you. But um, the person that was set to be number one was Shawn Michaels, and as it turns out, in 1995 he became the very first person to make it from either the number one or number two spot and go all the way, inventing his own rule. In the process. Well, not specifically inventing his own rule, but making a rule his. That, of course, is called the Shawn Michaels rule. Can someone explain what the Shawn Michaels rule is, please? By the way, I think that celebrity was Pam Anderson. That's what I thought. Pamela, Pamela Anderson. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, what was the Shawn Michaels rule? Quick quiz for you two. No idea. Nikki, you have failed me. Zach? Mm. I feel I should know this. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, probably should look that up before the podcast. But um, <laughs> the Shawn Michaels rule is the rule that states both feet must touch the ground for you to be. Eliminated. Oh, oh, that's also one. known as the Kofi Kingston rule. <laughs> it, it might as well be the Kofi Kingston rule in the modern day and age, because, I mean, that guy is a walking fucking Royal Rumble highlight reel. But the reason why it's called the Shawn Michaels rules, because in 1995, he was, uh, he made it all the way through, and his final opponent in the Royal Rumble was the British Bulldog. British Bulldog tosses him over the rope, turns around thinking he, he's won, and goes to the, the, uh, opposite turnbuckle to celebrate. Well, what he didn't know was that Shawn Michaels was hanging from the top rope all the way down. He's hanging there for dear life, and in the midst of that, one of his feet taps the floor. And a lot of people were saying, oh, he should be eliminated. Well, no, both feet must touch the floor. So he um, gets up back into the ring, pushes British Bulldog off the turnbuckle, and wins from the number one spot. And he is the first person to have ever done so, and he will forever be the first person to ever do so. Wow, now, I've, now I feel like a failure because I should have known this from the start. I just didn't know that was called the Shawn Michael rule. I, or Actually, was that rule ever addressed before? Hand, like the whole, um, both feet have to touch the floor. Was that ever addressed before this, or? Yeah, they always, they've always, I think they've always stated the rules before the Royal Rumble. But this is the first time. The, this is the occurrence. Is the reason why they always emphasize two feet on the floor. Always, mm. they emphasize that for this reason. And then you had um, John Morrison and Kofi Kingston taking advantage of that rule to pull off some really cool spots. Right. Strangely enough, I don't really remember that um, Royal Rumble that very well. I mean, I've saw, I've seen clips of like Shawn Michaels winning, but strangely yeah. enough, I don't really remember. Yeah, there's always that classic shot of him just dangling off the ropes with one foot on the ground, but you almost never see him like coming back in. And honestly, I thought it was Diesel that he knocked out, but I actually looked it up. It is British Bulldog, but that's the thing. You only ever see that bit one classic shot. You don't. Usually no, I remember adjusted. that Diesel beat Shawn Michaels at that um, upcoming WrestleMania. I think it was WrestleMania 9. Looking it up. I think it was. or it pro No, I think it was. Oh, 11, because... I think. 11. Yeah, because Diesel held the championship for, um, uh, God. He held that championship for over a year, if not almost a year. He held that thing for forever. Yeah. Um. So that that was a big thing. I know. I think it was Shawn Michaels that took the championship from. No, it can't. Okay. I we lack information on this, and we apologize for this. But I do know that Shawn Michaels first won the championship at WrestleMania 12 against um Bret Hart. I don't know who won that. No, oh, it was Bret Hart that won the championship from Diesel. I remember. Right. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, but anyway, Shawn Michaels from number one all the way through in the 1995 Royal Rumble, uh, coining the phrase Shawn Michaels rule in the process, eliminating British Bulldog and going on to do something at WrestleMania. He lost to Diesel, but still, it was a great moment. And it was an all right match, too. All right, what do we have next? Uh, oh, I believe I am up. So now we go to one of the more recent Royal Rumbles, 2010. Take it to the end of the match. It was uh, Cena, Triple H, and Jericho in the ring at that time. T- number 29 comes in, and it's Edge. And nobody was expecting this one. Like, people talk about how at um, the 2008 Royal Rumble, I think it was, when John Cena came back, and it's like, oh, he came back, like, way early from injury. Like, Edge did the same thing. He was supposed to be out for, like, 14 or 15 months and he came back after eight and came back and just cleaned house in the rumble spearing everyone inside giving educations left and right bang bang boom number 30 batista comes out he comes out and starts uh batista bombing people and then all hell breaks loose and edge ends up throwing out jericho throwing out um everybody ends up getting thrown out I'm trying to remember who were the last two guys in the Rumble. Help me out here, please. I think it was Jericho and Edge. No, no. Jericho pretty... was the first person that Edge eliminated. I believe the la- it wasn't Shawn Michaels. I know Shawn it Michaels was Cena. eliminated. Cena was it... the last one. Yes. And then Edge right. wins, and then he goes on to... um, uh, That was WrestleMania 26. And he ended up losing to Chris Jericho. Like, the- But That's... it was a really good match. Yeah, it was a really good match at WrestleMania, but the crazy... But it was just so cool to see Edge come back because I I thought it was going to be like when it happened, I thought, okay, 14 months. That's probably going to be next year's SummerSlam, maybe. Yeah. And we're probably going to be stuck with, oh, great. Chris Jericho and Batista. Yay. (laughs) No, but we got Chris Jericho and Edge. And I think it was pretty important that they went with that because from what I recall, they had like the tag team championships for a while. Then Edge got injured, and Jericho's just like, oh, Edge is always getting injured. Nobody cares about him. He started bad mouthing him. And then it was all very nicely lined up for the WrestleMania 26 match. Yeah, it was it was a year long buildup for that. Cause like right after or almost a year long buildup, because like, yeah, right after Edge got injured, they started setting it up for the big match at WrestleMania between the two, and it ended up really working out. So it, it's kind of rare that you see uh, match building take that long, and you don't see it very often, and I wish the WWE would do that more often. But No, they did that with Cena and The Rock. We all know how, <laughs> well, uh, that ended okay, up turning out. let me rephrase. I like seeing it when it's done. Wow! Well, you yeah. have to admit, WrestleMania 28 and 29 got more PPV buys than any other WrestleManias, so... Do we judge pay-per-view success by number of PPV buys? Well, the do company we? does. Yeah. We don't, but they do. WrestleMania 28 got 1,240,000 pay-per-view buys. No other WrestleMania comes close. They have The Rock to thank for that. You know what would have been nice, I think? Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. It would have been nice if The Rock won the Royal Rumble once. He did. 2000. Oh, Okay. Okay, I've been wrong. I didn't. I didn't think he ever won it. No, he won in two thousand over Big Show. Ah, uh, and okay. It would have been hilarious though because Stone Cold, uh, was out for injury at the time, and he's won three Royal Rumbles more than anybody else: nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety eight, and two thousand one. I bet that if he was still in action in the year two thousand, he would have won that thing. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have been hilarious if it this year's Royal Rumble it's like down to like Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns Stone Cold's music hits and he just throws them both over he's just like yeah fucker one more match one more match <laughs> that, that's what they I want. would buy they, that pay-per-view they want they want Stone Cold to go in one more match but uh the reason why he's a bit apprehensive to do it is because he doesn't want to have to go through that high again of wrestling uh, and then have to go back to his house and run his reality show again. That's that's the reason why he's really apprehensive about the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to see him as a guest appearance at a Royal Rumble. That hasn't happened yet. I promise you, every single time Stone Cold's music hits, every time that glass breaks, boom, marked Instant out pop. by everyone. Yes. Ah! Oh, my God! Stone Cold! Stone Cold is here! 
Texas Rattlesnake is here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Dude, Philadelphia would mark the fuck out. They would. Uh, That'd be awesome. Hey, Stone Cold's an old EC dub guy. Anyway, Edge, we're, we've been getting off track the whole time, but that's because we're excited, because it's Royal Rumble time! Edge returning at the 2010 Royal Rumble at number 29, eliminating everybody to win the thing is awesome, because nobody expected it, and that's what made it great. Exactly. Good stuff. Next up, we have probably the fucking most unintentionally funniest Royal Rumble moment ever. I, I fucking love this. Zach, just go. I, I love this so much. Oh, uh, I love this too. Now, before we get to anything, okay, this is the 2005 Royal Rumble all the way from Fresno, California. Before we talk about the match, I just want to talk about the poster real quick, which I'm going to put right here. They were going with a West Side Story sort of thing between Raw and SmackDown, and I just found that hilarious because it didn't fit at all. Is that a it was, PlayStation Royal or a PlayStation logo in the bottom of the screen for no freaking reason? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, I've seen them do stupider stuff. I've seen them do the WrestleMania 21 uh, friggin' trailer mocks. Those were at least funny, but this was just, yeah. Anyway, 2005 Royal Rumble. This one set up a lot of things for WrestleMania 21, but what was going on at the time were the big pushes, I would think, between. Batista and John Cena, the two men that were the last that were, you know, in the final two for the Royal Rumble itself. Everything seems to be going just fine. Right up until the one infamous botch that a lot of people talk about when it comes to this match. Cena and Batista are brawling. They grab each other and they both go over the top rope and both feet hit the floor. What? Batista lifted up Cena and wanted to throw him over the ropes, but he lost his balance, stepped backwards, and they went over the rope. And what happened was that John Cena was supposed to hit the mat slightly before Batista. And they were supposed to do the whole replay thing and then announce Batista as the winner. As it happens, by sheer fucking fluke, they both hit the mat at the exact same time time and you can see the referees for like a split second are surrounding them and they're like okay what do we do here for like a very split second but they were smart and they started announcing both of them as the winners uh sort of as a repeat in the 1994 royal rumble where both lex luger and bret hart won what we didn't know at the time was that this wasn't a recreation it was just a flat out botch it wasn't supposed to happen and the referees were covering for it and the commentators were stalling for time and then Vince McMahon gets really, really angry and storms out of the Titantron and just starts f power walking through the entrance, throwing his jacket on the floor, getting really, really upset, and he did something he doesn't normally do. Normally what he would do is he climbs up the steps, goes over the ropes, and into the ring. No, this time he decides to try to slide in as though he's a professionally trained wrestler, and in the process, he tears back. Both of his quads. Not one of them. Not one of his quads. Both of them. Why? Because if Triple H can tear one quad, well, I'm Vince McMahon. I can tear both of them because fuck you. I still remember seeing that. I'm like, oh, shit. Is Vince okay? Um, I don't <laughs> think that was planned either. <laughs> no, he wasn't okay at all. You can see him try to stand up, but then he falls backwards and he starts resting on the bottom rope, lying on his back. And you can see in his eyes, it's like he can't concentrate because of the sheer pain that's flowing through his body. And the referees are trying to communicate with him and, and asking him what to do. And he's just looking at there going, what? What? Did something? Oh, my legs. Ow. Now, here's the thing. This would have been all right if this was like something on SmackDown, you know, because that's tape. They can fix this. This is live at the, I think, right around the end of the pay-per-view. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody doesn't know what the fuck's going on. People are wondering, okay, is this is the is the match over? What's gonna happen? <laughs> But no, thankfully, uh, they managed to restart the match, and Batista very quickly throws Cena over the top rope, and then bam, Batista wins. God, that must have been embarrassing, though, because Cena was supposed to go over anyway. He's just like, oh, God, it's happening again. Why? <laughs> but not, it just, 
what they show for like the promos, you know, of WrestleMania 21 with showing them Batista winning. It looks pretty cool. It looks epic. I'm just glad they don't show what actually happened <laughs> because that's embarrassing. I mean, I know it shows in the, in the in on the Wikipedia page that Batista won by eliminating Cena, but still, for those that actually were there and remember that moment, that's what makes it memorable. <laughs> oh, they they covered for that so beautifully, though. Like nobody knew for the longest time that the whole thing was just a giant series of botches. Eventually, the company company admitted because. It wasn't their fault, and it's a funny moment that it was all one gigantic fluke. So, in my mind, that is easily one of the best Royal Rumble moments ever, just because of, A, how amazing the botches were, B, the fact that Vince McMahon tore both of his fucking quads, and C, the fact that they were able to cover for all of that so brilliantly. It was beautiful. I, I, I am so shocked that they were able to do that and I don't think they'll be able to do that ever again. I Could should... you imagine though if they did that with this year's Royal Rumble with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns going over the top rope and recreating that moment again? <laughs> My heart can't take that! Please! <laughs> don't do that to us again! All right. Trips, Trips tears his quads again. <laughs> no, Triple H comes out and fucking No, <laughs> no! Stephanie! Stephanie tears her quads! <laughs> <laughs> Quad tears for the entire McMahon family! You get a quad tear, you get a quad tear, Shane McMahon <laughs> comes out because he doesn't know what the fuck's going on, he gets a quad tear too! <laughs> Linda McMahon gets a quad tear! <laughs> the babies the both fuck? come out, they're just like, Mommy, what's going on? I'll get on my quad! <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I should mention that before we did this podcast, I had no idea about any of these botches. And I was I was trying to get information out of them, like what kind of what kind of happened in this match? And they were like, No, we aren't telling you. We no, want your reaction. No, <laughs> no your oh. genuine reaction is what we wanted. Oh, that was gold. That was pure gold right there. The other good thing though is that later on, Cena and Batista would both use this to catapult themselves up to main event status this is their road to wrestlemania that made them both legitimate main event spotlight a plus players as we all know cena beat jbl to win the wwe championship and batista beat triple h to get the world heavyweight championships on the same pay-per-view on the same night where both of them got their chances to truly shine it was almost like the passing of the guard at that point it's like two it was guys Batista and John Cena, two, the two young guys who were going to carry the WWE for the next 10 years, pretty much. And they beat two established vets that have been around since the Attitude Era. And yeah, it was it was it was, it was, a, it was a good ro it was a good road for them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we have next? What do we have next? OK, in 2013, Mick Foley was watching the Royal Rumble with his son, who was nine at the time. And uh, his son, in the middle of it, went up and went, Hey, Dad, uh, were you ever in the Royal Rumble? And Mick Foley uh, looks to his son and goes, Why, not only was I in the Royal Rumble, but in 1998, I was in the Royal Rumble three times! And his son looks down at the floor and goes, Wow, three times? And yet you still didn't win? Oh! He just got burned by Mini Foley. Mick Foley was in the 1998 Rumble three times with all three of his personas, Mankind, Dude Love, and Cactus Jack. And no, he didn't win. Stone Cold did. What was still cool, though, is that he got to bring out all three of his personas, and I think this is Mick Foley's best Royal Rumble to date, I think. Yeah. Dude, those costume changes must have been hell. They really, they looked like they were hell. I know this is kind of off topic, but as somebody who, like, used to perform and had in, like, plays and stuff and had to do rapid costume changes, it is difficult. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, under the Cactus Jack outfit was the Mankind outfit and the under that was the Dude Love outfit. Mankind went first. There's no way. Yeah, Mankind no, is no, the no, most. No, 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 no. Cactus Jack went first. No, Mankind was first. Mankind is the most complicated costume that he wears. Mankind was eliminated by his tag team partner, the dude with the fucking chainsaw, um, about a minute in. He was eliminated very early so he could go backstage and change into, I believe it was Cactus Jack at that point. Then Cactus Jack comes out, gets eliminated in about four minutes, and then Are goes you? back, dude love. 
Are you sure? Because I'm reading like what it says on here. It says Cactus Jack was first, then Mankind, then Dude Love. Yeah, Cactus Jack was the number one guy. I'm sorry. I'm really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm dumb as fuck. That, that, that is something, though, that I don't think we're ever going to see again, because Mick Foley is a very talented personality and actor, so he's the only one that could ever juggle three personas, and it was really, really clever. I bet one of the, um, I bet, uh, uh, what's his name? Vince Russo was in the back smoking a joint, and he was like, <laughs> yeah, you know what would be, <laughs> wait, wait a second, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know what would be really funny? If, if, uh, <laughs> no, this is crazy, this is crazy. Wait, wait, wait. If Mick Foley went into the Royal Rumble with all three of his personas, in different intervals. Wait, 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 wait. You could have costume changes in the middle. <laughs> I bet that was their train of thought. I bet they were uh, all high. That, That's probably how they are mostly nowadays in the creative office anyway. No, no, they're not that creative. They need more weed for that. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> Shit, they just need to go to RVD for that. Oh. <laughs> I ain't even mad on that one. I am not even mad. <laughs> But RVD is such a stoner piece of shit, and I love him. <laughs> oh, man. I will defend this ECW championship with everything that I've got. I also want to hold on to this one. It spins. <laughs> it spins! <laughs> hold on a second. Let me just get high. I just want to spin. Ew, this is so cool. It's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. I was going to get the championship, but I got high. Basically, Ooh. basically. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, that is hilarious, though. They got okay. high. They put McFoley in the Rumble three times, and it was really funny. It was. All right, so now we come to our last um, matchy thingy. All right, so we got to go way back for this one. I think this is the farthest back we're going for any of these, all the way back to 1992. This actually was the first time that the WW, well, WWF at that time title was at stake at some point in the future. But in fact, it was at stake at this very event in like the WWF title was vacated at that point. So pretty much anybody like basically last man standing wins the title and you were expecting somebody like oh i don't know hulk hogan to win it he won the last two before that it's logical it's gonna go to hogan but no not only do they not go with hogan or dibiase or uh, roddy piper or any of the other guys that you would think would win the rumble they give it to rick flair and this is nuts because Ric Flair was known for being the NWA guy, the WCW guy. He was like, I think he had just got to the WWE not that long ago, two months prior. And he comes in and he wins the fucking Rumble and the fucking title in the process. And what's even cooler than that was he won from the number three position. So he was in the match for a really long time. He was actually an the hour very... and two seconds, I think. Yeah, he was actually the very first person to ever be in a Royal Rumble match for over one hour. And, and that's and... a thing. And that's a record that's only really shared with likes of uh, Mysterio and Benoit and yeah. Triple H and Triple H. I've got the record thing right here. Uh, Rey Mysterio, Chris Benoit, Bob Backlund, Triple H, Ric Flair. That's it. Five guys who've ever been in the Royal Rumble for over an hour. Bob and, Blackman, really? Yep, in 93. Okay. Yeah, didn't win it, though. Yeah, the but... whole thing was really monumental because at that point, that was the uh, fifth Royal Rumble that went on, and people had been accustomed to the winner appearing in the Royal Rumble in the last half. So basically, they got to number 15, and then the crowd was like, okay, one of these guys is going to be a candidate for winning. And then when Ric Flair shows up as one of the final few guys, I remember the commentator saying, whoa, hold on. All right, no, one, no one's ever won this from below number 13. Can Ric Flair do it? Can he 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 do it? He does it! Yeah! Ric Flair is the champion! And then he, and then he airs this wonderful promo where he mm. says that the WWE title 
is the most important championship, the most important piece of recognition that he has ever gotten in, in, in his entire career, which basically puts down the NWA titles. And that is huge because it helps to separate the WWE from the territories that were going on. It's it's an, a step in the evolution of the WWE separating themselves from the territories. And he says, with a tear in my eye, it doesn't seem like much today, especially with us generation being raised on the WWE being the single entity. But back then, that was absolutely monumental. What else needs to be said on that? I think that's a really great way to end this podcast. Actually, no, if I may, if I may for a minute, I'd actually like to give uh, one honorable mention. Now, I know this is something that not a lot of wrestling fans are really supposed to talk about or we're supposed to mention, but I'd like to give an honorable mention to Chris Benoit's win at the 2004 Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. That, for me, was my first introduction, in, I guess reintroduction into wrestling, seeing the, the Royal Rumble in 2004 and seeing Benoit win at WrestleMania 20. So, for me, that, that's just a little honorable mention that I'd like to throw out. Yeah, yeah, I, I really don't like how we have to basically like disassociate ourselves from Chris Benoit. Like I know what he did was awful. Like I know that he was just like absolutely a wreck outside of the ring. But like Benoit was always one of my favorite guys uh, when I was getting into wrestling. Like he was really cool, and he he was one of those guys who went in and just beat the shit out of people, and just he wasn't like a comedic guy, but he was just. He was really good at what he did, and I really liked him, and I I, I know that the WWE is never going to actually acknowledge him, at least not for a very long time. But or I put guess, him in the Hall of Fame. Or put No, he's never getting in the Hall. If you take his career in a vacuum, he totally should, but he never will. But, yeah, I think at least as fans, we, we can at least maybe sort of appreciate that. Appreciate I him think. again? I don't know. It's, this is all getting those? edited out. All of it. What? It's all but, but, getting edited but, out. But we have to talk about Benoit, though. I mean, we can't just erase him from history. Yeah, he was in the second longest person ever in the Rumble. He Benoit was... Hall of Fame 2015. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit! Benoit does deserve a little bit of recognition, and unfortunately, he fucked up. He fucked up. And uh, we don't even need to mention just the haywire. It, his his events are the most minor blessing in disguise ever. Because of what he did, there was increased concussion awareness in all forms of sports. But at the same time, that's not worth the cost of three lives. So no, WWE his... has every right to erase him from history. As sad as it is, because it means that his incredible 2004 win is gone almost at least because they do mention two men they just don't show the footage but it's it's sad it really really is sad that he had to do what he did because there are a lot of things like that iconic picture of benoit and uh eddie guerrero holding up their championships uh with confetti raining down on them at uh, WrestleMania 20, it, it it's absolutely incredible, and you will never see that picture in a WWE publication ever again. Or that one famous shot with all of the radicals together, uh, Guerrero, Malenko, Benoit, and Saturn, like, with their hands together in camaraderie, and it's just like, nope. Chris Benoit, you've accomplished a lot. I'm just, you're just a piece of shit, so, sorry. Yeah. The only reason I even bring up Benoit is because I see so much of Benoit in Brian now. And I think Brian could probably pull off something in the same way that Benoit or Mysterio did. With all these moments that we talked about, these could possibly pale in comparison to what we could see at the Rumble this year. It's all about what the WWE is going to do. We know that we really, really want Daniel Bryan to win. We'll say that. Some of us probably want Reigns to win too. We don't know. We just hope that this Royal Rumble is going to be a great one. It, it better be better than TLC because we don't want <laughs> we don't want to see this screwed up. This is Daniel Bryan win, Daniel Bryan wins at number 1, takes the championship from either Brock Lesnar or Seth Rollins and then he can retire. I'm I'm he can retire after that. I'm I'm okay with that. 
at least we have closure because at that point he can hold the championship for a little while a little while and then pass it off to Roman Reigns I'm good with that but we need closure with Daniel Bryan because his injuries from his high-flying stiff style have added up it's very clear and he needs to retire but we again we need that oh, give me one second hold on shit did he spill his coffee <laughs> Are we, are we still? Are we still? Are we still going? Yeah, we're still going. Uh, Zach, play us off. With that being said, I'm. T- uh, wow, whoop! Well, hang on, I'm gonna try that again. Okay. That being said, I'm Tune Critic. He's Kalkos. He's Nikki V. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys for our Royal Rumble predictions. Just be better than last year's. That's all I'm asking.